Hey, everybody. Welcome to yet another edition. Yet another edition. Yet another fucking edition of the Jizz Booth. Of the Jizz Booth. <laughs> That's right. Just like we rebranded, we rebranded the pre-post show into the Grease Trap. We've decided that uh, Flash Fried is now called oh, the, the Jizz Booth. Booth. God damn it, guys! You got to say it right, Paul. The Jizz. Uh, Don't tell uh, me how to say it. You say it how my... you want to say it. <sighs> No, that's, there's an official way we say it. WNBC. Oh, God damn it. Shut I guess up, I'm TK. just going to have to be the Howard Stern. The jizz <sighs> booth. Well, you guys shut the fuck up. I'm trying to get a fucking jizz on here. Shut up, Scotty. Quit jizzing. <sighs> You've already jizzed eight times, uh, Scotty. Put it away. Put uh, it the right. fuck away. Right. Scotty's always got to be jizzing. I don't, I don't want to see that every fucking day I come into work. That's sexual harassment, Scotty. I don't give a shit, dude. It's the Put jizz your booth. dick away. <laughs> Quit Weinsteining me and Paul. <laughs> yeah, dude, you're gonna get twenty three years. Before you get twenty three years. Oh in shit! Jail. All right, twenty three. Fuck! I'm putting it back. Putting it back. All right, we're good. God damn, disgusting fucking. I'm reprobate. Sorry, man. All right, let's. Ugh. Got horny, you know. You know what happens every fucking day. Every day in this fucking. All right. <sighs> let's get to the news. What do you guys say? You want news? Here's some news. My, 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 my Corona. <laughs> I'm, I'm just staying. I'm, I'm silently. Yeah, Paul's gonna be quiet this episode. Yep. This is gonna be the. Uh, this is my funeral for the human race episode. Coronavirus is ten times more lethal than seasonal flu. Trump's task force immunologist said. <laughs> says, uh, Doctor Anthony Fauci, probably saying that somewhere in the vicinity of correctly. Anthony Fauci. Fauci. Anthony Fauci. I just call him Tony, uh, director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, told lawmakers during a House Oversight Committee hearing Wednesday that COVID-19, the disease caused by the novel coronavirus, is probably about 10 times more lethal than the seasonal flu. Uh, President Trump has often compared COVID-19 to the flu, which affects tens of thousands of Americans each year. Um, it affects more than that. I don't know what you're talking about. It affects a lot more than tens of thousands of Americans. Yeah, I mean, up to 30 to 70,000 people die depending on the flu season every year. I I, I would say a lot more more than that are actually affected uh, by the flu. Like 10,000 people get the flu every year. Uh, But Fauci wasn't trying to downplay the seriousness of the virus spread. Fauci is a member of the White House Coronavirus Task Force. At the same time, he did (laughs) clarify that 10 times figure actually brings the new coronavirus fatality rate lower than official estimates, which hover around 3%. The flu has a mortality rate of about 0.1%. So when considering the likelihood that there are many asymptomatic or very mild cases that have gone undiagnosed, Fauci places the new coronavirus lethality rate at somewhere around 1%. Well, that's a good deal lower than the current data suggests. Uh, It still would lead to significant numbers of fatalities and makes uh, the flu comparison seem pretty questionable. Well, we did an episode on the uh, Spanish flu. The um, mortality rate for that was about 2.5% or something like that. Right. And it's still resulted I mean, in no, 50 million deaths. There's no way of really knowing what the fatality rate of the coronavirus let's, let's is. Let's say it's point. half a percent. But if 100 million people get it, you see what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> but we don't. I mean, like this, this is just one. I mean, this guy is just he's basically just guesstimating. He's best. He's saying like, <gasps> well, you know, a lot of people, they don't even know they have it. They're asymptomatic. So, you know, when you factor that well, in, did you hear about the thing in Seattle where the doctors wanted to test this like back in January? Right. But the, but the government, the federal government wouldn't let him do it. Yeah. So it was like, I mean, the reason that all these cases are happening in Washington or the Seattle area, like, yeah, there's definitely more deaths there. And it's probably more of an epicenter for the disease currently. But more than likely, the disease was there a lot longer than anyone even knew. There's no fucking way of knowing how many people have it and don't know they have it or how many people have it, but are asymptomatic or are only having mild symptoms. There's no way of fucking knowing that. So this figure that this guy, this guy's just pulling this figure out of his ass because there's no way he can know how many people have it. Sure. But I think it's based on the, uh, on the assumption that, and it's almost a tacit admission that way more people have this than it's confirmed. Right. So it's like, which means that there's, if even if this guy's right, that means there's a lot more people out there spreading this thing. Oh yeah. And you know, and of course there's people, we know that some people are asymptomatic about 80%. Yeah. We know that some people have only very mild symptoms. So that's a ton of people spreading this thing. And uh, you know, there's a lot of people who have high risk factors. Now it's not just the people with high risk factors who have died. There've been other people who have died. Who are seemingly healthy. Yeah. Who are young, relatively young, relatively healthy. Uh, but it does seem like the older you are, the more, um, you know, 
Well, the mortality rate from, that I heard, uh, and obviously these numbers are always, they're kind of in, they're fluid right now. Uh, over 80, it was about a 15% right. uh, mortality rate. Over 70, I think it's like an 8 or 9% chance. Yep. Um, and then there's other risk factors. Like one, I was watching that guy on uh, Joe Rogan the other day. I forget his name, but he's an infectious disease specialist. And he's talking about, you know, uh, smoking's a risk factor. Yep. Obesity is a risk factor. Uh, asthma is a risk factor, you know. You already have uh, sort of respiratory issues of any kind, or if you right. have a compromised immune system, um, you know those kind of things are big risk factors in this. Uh, so no one should just assume like I'm safe because you don't know what the fuck risk factor you might have. Well, well, even that. I mean, let's say you're just a carrier of it. If you don't take any precautions and you spread it to people who are a vulnerable population group, that quickly overwhelms the healthcare system trying to treat all those people and uh, and people who already have conditions that are not uh, related to COVID nineteen. I mean, that's really the biggest danger is that that system gets overrun and then you you a process which called triage which all hospitals do to begin with you know you walk in I stubbed my toe you know I'm having a heart attack who are they going to treat first right i saw a thing that said that we're probably about 10 days away from uh, the american healthcare system being completely overwhelmed well, that honestly is astonishing just because of the fact that a lot of estimates put it more in like may well i saw one <laughs> i mean if it's i saw it, I, I saw at least one person that was saying uh, that was saying um you know, within 10 days, our hospitals are going to be overwhelmed. Now, that could be fear mongering. That could be Hyperbole, exaggeration. Yeah. That could be hyperbolic. But, you know, when it comes to something like this, you just don't fucking know. Because, I mean, all kinds of predictions are floating around out there. And you can hear every opinion from this ain't shit. This ain't nothing. Who cares? It's just media uh, blowing this and out of proportion. What? To, to well, this is a fucking disaster. Well, if you're one of the people that's just a carrier of it, it could just be nothing to you, right? I mean, so you, so I mean, you, and you're going to have people like that in the world that are going to go out, not give a shit, potentially, and probably contract the disease, have no real symptoms, and go, it was nothing. But then you're walking on the street, and there's a vulnerable person, and you meet them, and you make contact with them, breathe the same air, whatever. Those droplets get into them, and then they die. So, Paul, uh, I know you're uh, doing your vow of silence, but do you want to maybe talk about the? Uh the uh, very informative discussion that you were uh, a party to earlier. Oh uh, God. Okay. I stopped at a vape shop on the way to work today. Oh no. And the two stoner guys in it were having a conversation about the coronavirus. And the one, the one main stoner dude that was kind of guiding the conversation. When I walked in, he was, he was talking all this like anti conspiracy shit. He was like, you know, they want to tell us, like, I, I hear all this stupid shit, like, it's a bioweapon, and it's this, and it's that. But, uh, you know, from what I can tell, and from everything I've looked at, it was just these people eating these fucking animals they shouldn't have been eating in China, and that fucking got to them, and now it got to everybody else. And I was in there for, like, five minutes transacting my business, and by the end of the five minutes, he was going like, you know, these happen every election cycle. Mm, kind of makes you think a little conspiracy going on here maybe <laughs> uh, dude <laughs> is it, i mean uh, it's a little too convenient isn't it that every election he's just talking all this conspiracy shit and i was like how do you hold two self-refuting wrong <laughs> assumptions about something that could probably kill you or a bunch of people you know so this is not shocking to me i've been harping on this shit you guys know my fucking shit. I've been harping on this fucking end of the world doom. I'm the I'm the fucking modern day version of the crazy guy standing in Times Square with the end is nigh sign. Yeah. You know, and an old fucking shoe on his head. <laughs> but you know what? I saw this shit coming, dumbasses. When you've got f like 50% of the population that's just unconscionably stupid. It turns out that when something comes along, we're not going to deal with it right. Like, what the fuck? Who didn't see this coming? I mean, everyone saw it coming. People. I mean, look, Bill Gates did a TED Talk, and it's now, it's now famous on the internet about five, six years ago. We talked about how we were woefully unprepared for a pandemic and how, with, uh, you know, like Ebola, well, that was mainly limited, you know, Western Africa. It's like he's like pretty much by luck. <laughs> by luck, the fact that people, when they get Ebola, are basically like, oh, you know when they start showing symptoms it's pretty obvious and like they're not they're not walking around a bunch and guess what the people that tried to uh, did, didn't take those people to healthcare uh, institutions try to treat their family members at home all got fucking the Ebola virus some of them obviously dying you know so this has been well known for years the 
community, the epi, uh, what, what, what do we call them? Uh, epidemiologists. Ep- epidemiologists. Yeah, epidemiologists and you know viral experts and everyone like that. They've been warning people for fucking years. So even dumbass donors like us know, like, wait a minute, if a pandemic happens, no one's prepared for it. And and what we're seeing now is just shows that people obviously look at it and go, oh, it's just a fucking piece of entertainment. Yeah, some v- fucking viral video or some video I saw by Vice or some other thing. Hey, guys, pandemics are bad. And it's like, oh, what's next? What's next? What's the next TikTok challenge? <laughs> You know, so our, our apathy for these uh, to be proactive for problems and instead of being reactive, that's all we're doing now. Now it's it's totally reactive. You know, you have the president of the United States. His solution is p- uh, payroll tax cut down to zero. Well, people are afraid to go to concerts and movie theaters and restaurants and businesses. It's not going to matter if the fucking uh, payroll tax rate is zero because no one's going to have a fucking job and no one's going to want to see anybody else or be a- around anyone. Most Americans <clears throat> will likely be exposed to coronavirus, Republicans told Uh, Last week, Republican members of Congress heard a sobering uh, sober warning in a closed door briefing on Capitol Hill. There's a good chance most people in the United States will eventually be exposed to the novel coronavirus, according to one former official. The assessment from a former White House public health official who now works in the pharmaceutical industry did not suggest that most people will become infected or ill, rather that most people will encounter the virus, which has killed at least 31 Americans and infected hundreds more. Uh, Not all public health experts share the view and not everyone exposed to the virus that and not everyone who exposed the virus will become infected. Still, the briefing highlighted the potential gravity of the growing crisis. Two sources, a member of Congress who attended the briefing and a second person with knowledge of it, described the remarks made last week to the Daily Beast. Uh, they were delivered by Rajiv Venkaya, the president of the Global Vaccine Business Unit at Tokyo-based pharmaceutical uh, giant Takeda. Uh, the member of Congress said the comments wa- the comment was sobering, while the second person noted it came during a discussion about how to manage the cost of medical care related to the coronavirus. Minkaya pointed out that the wide, that widespread um, access to medical care will be vital given the light, likely breadth of the exposure of the source. So this country's fucked. <clears throat> yeah, because our health care system is dog shit. Yeah. We're, I mean, like other countries that have universal health care can be much better equipped to deal with this. I mean, like this is the country where because there's no, um, you know, you're basically it's basically like a grand inquisition if you fucking take a sick leave there's no paid vacation days that are man- they're not mandated by law anyway or anything like that well walmart walmart and these other companies are actually uh instituting those policies just simply just out of like oh wait like we kind of have to do this because people are gonna start getting sick and so basically yeah what are we gonna do that american i mean like american workers you know have no right to sick leave if you get sick or something doesn't matter. You know, they'll just show up to work and then they'll fucking. I mean, if you got a fucking Starbucks employee that's going into Starbucks and handing you your fucking latte or whatever with the fucking coronavirus on their goddamn hands. Oh, dude, Starbucks will close. Yeah, one already has. Yeah, Starbucks doesn't fuck around with this shit. Like, uh, if, one it, of them if it gets to closed. the point of a major fucking community spread event, there won't be a fucking Starbucks. There was open a, in sight. There, was there a won't Starbucks. be a grocery store. See, this is what I'm talking about, yep. dude. There was a Starbucks uh, where. Um, Someone there uh, tested positive. That whole store is closed right now. Oh, of course it is. It's, yeah, it's Star- Starbucks has never been a company that fucks around with this shit. Well, they, I, I commend them for that. They closed their entire fucking fleet of stores nationally on 9-11. Like, they just shut down. Well, a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, Taco Bell was shut down, too. That pissed me off. Well, that wasn't, Taco a, that wasn't actually the policy of Taco Bell, though. That was just right, an I individual gotcha. store going, fuck this. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't sticking around. Uh, coronavirus X-ray shows terrifying damage to lungs of COVID-19 victims. So here's some x-rays here. Um, this is the the lungs of a 44-year-old Chinese man who eventually died. And uh, I don't really know what this stuff is. Probably explains it somewhere. CT scans of a 54-year-old woman who tested positive after visiting Wuhan, China, the initial epicenter of the global outbreak, show white patches uh, in her lungs. The abnormalities are known as ground glass opacity or fluid in the spaces in the lungs, and they were more pronounced in later scans. So she has a bunch of fluid in her lungs. The woman was admitted to the hospital after having a fever for a week, a cough, fatigue, and chest congestion. Uh, She was diagnosed with severe COVID-19 pneumonia and treated with oxygen and antibiotics. These uh, early cases are probably the lucky ones, if you want to be being honest, because... Of the fact that 
the healthcare system hasn't been overwhelmed yet. What's going to happen, and like Paul's been speaking about, is that imagine when you get this disease uh, and you go to a hospital and it's overflowing with people with the same disease. <laughs> I mean, what's going to happen? Yep. <laughs> I mean, well, you don't have to be a fucking genius to figure out what's going to happen. Chaos is going to happen. People are going to fucking lose their minds because they can't get treatment. And then you have a bunch of uh, uh, older people in your family, you know, are, and these uh, uh, social groups are going to be dying. I'm mean, just talking about most people are going to get this. And 15 percent of the people over a certain age group, like we're going to see a lot of elderly deaths. Just I mean, I mean, yeah, there's going to be young people dying, too, of course. But just the, the fact that, you know, we could lose millions of lives now. I mean, no one knows. I mean, we could all fucking die from this. We don't fucking know. Health officials called to emergency meeting at uh, White House. Rep Maloney. Now, we know there's not really much information about this, but I'll just read the entire thing here. New York, March 11th. Health officials scheduled to testify at a congressional hearing on the fast moving coronavirus outbreak on Wednesday are being called to an emergency meeting at the White House later today. Rep Carolyn Maloney said, uh, noting that the hearing would have to end early. The witnesses, who include National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease Director Anthony Fauci, Fauci uh, and uh, Centers of Disease Control and Prevention Director Robert Redfield, uh, will have to leave early, so the meeting will end at 11.45 Eastern Time, she said. Maloney said she did uh, not have additional details about the meeting, except that it is urgent. So some sort of, oh, shit. Some sort of emergency meeting at the White House uh, involving... You know, a lot of key figures in this uh, coronavirus uh, task force or whatever the fuck it's called. I mean, look, there's no way to contain the coronavirus at this point. The best thing is to try to limit the spread as much as possible so that the the institutions we have in place are less overwhelmed or have less. I mean, <laughs> that, that the best case scenario for us now, I would honestly say, is more, is more than likely just the system not being as overwhelmed and these cases being spread out as much as possible because it's going to, it's just going to happen anyways. And, and if no one takes any precautions, it's just going to spread more, more rapidly. We've already seen how this is probably, you know, I can't think of in my lifetime of disease that spread this quickly or this far. I mean, can you guys, or maybe the swine flu, uh, the swine, did the swine flu spread as, as, uh, much as uh, this did, <laughs> there was, I don't know if it was as quick, but that's probably the only thing. There was I could... the swine flu. There was the bird flu. Yeah, the, but I remember. I remember some other little. I remember some other pan like possible pandemics that kind of spread around a little bit. H one, like H one N one and shit. But I don't remember anything quite spreading like this has. I don't remember anything shutting down shit the way that the coronavirus has. Yeah, there's always kind of a sense of like, oh, that's bad. But I don't remember like, oh, Italy is under quarantine. Or, I don't remember that kind of shit. Yeah, going that's what on, I'm saying. You know? I mean, like maybe I, you know, I have the memory of a stoner. So <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, but. Dude, you guys forgot the major pandemic last year that, yeah, that killed I mean, 20 million. It's like, oh, shit. Slept through that one. Fuck. I wouldn't put it past this. Uh, no escape from virus threat for 2 million crammed in prisons. So here's a here's a group of people, prisoners, uh, many of which I want to remind our uh, our viewers or listeners or whatever you you are out there uh, shouldn't be there because <laughs> they're just nonviolent offenders. A lot of them there for drug crimes, drug possession or other bullshit crimes. Um, I mean, for the fact they can't pay their bail. Right. But <laughs> even shit like that. I mean, don't you, how many people do we have incarcerated in this country just because they can't pay bail? Like 400,000 or something, something like, that? like that. It's an insane number. Um, but there's no escape for them. They can't take it. all these precautions we're talking about taking and shit. These people, they, they literally can't take. They have no access to it. They have no ability and they have no ability to avoid crowds because they're just in a crowded place and they're not allowed to leave. Um, what about access to health care? I mean, some uh, that's spotty. It's very dependent on where they are. Well, the state has to. Well, the state or the federal government, depending on what institution you're in, has to provide that for but you. It's, how, how, it, it's yeah. not usually all that great. Uh, but with all the resources stretched thin, you think they're going to put prisoners to the yeah. front? Of that? <laughs> Our I mean, top priority is to save the prisoners. <laughs> yeah, those, those motherfuckers said are fucked, no dude. fucking government ever. Yeah, never. More than 950 cases of COVID-19 have been uh, confirmed in the U.S. And, you know, like, I remember, was it wasn't just, just like 500 yesterday? It's already doubled? I mean, come on. But none yet in the thousands of jails and prisons across the country. Epidemiologists expect it will only be a matter of time. Conditions in correctional facilities are much the same as those on the cruise ships uh, that were early incubators. 
with confined populations, some people especially vulnerable to exposure, and medical care with varying levels of availability and caliber. It's considered a congregate setting. That's one of the risks, uh, said Ann Spaulding, an associate professor uh, at Emory University's Rollins School of Public Health. The propensity to incarcerate at such high levels can accelerate epidemics. Uh, such as the recent, out- I quit bringing your politics into it. We should, it's, if we want to imprison fucking a larger percentage of our population than any other country on the face of the earth, that's our business, eh? That's our fucking business. More than 2 million Americans are in custody on any given day, the most in any country, and lockups have ex- uh, experience with airborne diseases, including influenza and tuberculosis and those transmitted by blood, such as hepatitis C and HIV. To protect inmates and staff from the highly contagious coronavirus, though, guards and healthcare workers can't do much beyond following guidelines from the U.S. Centers uh, for Disease Control and the World Health Organization. Monitor for signs of contagion. Cover your mouth when you sneeze or cough. Wash your hands. In many institutions, hand sanitizer isn't allowed because of its alcohol content. Uh, Inmates' rights advocates have raised the alarm that correctional facilities, particularly those that are overcrowded, may be unprepared. Some of the advocates have called for authorities to release low-level, nonviolent offenders to remove them from harm's way and consider furloughs for the aging and ill and those behind bars uh, because they can't afford uh, pre-trial bail. Oh, basically, so basically just release the wow. people who shouldn't even fucking be there in the first place. <laughs> well, some of them. For, for society to do the right thing because of the threat of disease. Yeah, but as Paul said, some of them. Right. You know, ultimately, how many people those people will be released is probably a, a small number. And uh, probably not. It's I mean, just going to run rap. It's just going to run rampant through these fucking prisons. A bunch of these prisoners are going to die and they're going to spread to the guards. They're going to go outside those walls and spread to other people. I mean... Until we take this shit seriously, it's going to keep spreading. But don't worry. President Trump's on the case. Except Uh, he's not. Trump reportedly won't meet with Pelosi on a coronavirus bill or for any reason because he's mad at her. I feel total confidence in our government. (laughs) He's mad. (laughs) Look, look, TJ, she was mean to me. She was mean to me. She tore up the speech, TJ. She was mean to me. I'm a genius. No. (laughs) No. Uh Uh-uh. Yeah, I got you. Fuck Pelosi. Uh-uh. Fuck her. I'm not going to meet her. I don't care how many people that bitch wants to meet me. Uh-uh. President Trump traveled to Capitol Hill on Tuesday to discuss a coronavirus economic stimulus package with Senate Republicans. That's because that's the priority. The economy got to be you got to save the economy. Any bill would have to be approved by the Democratic led house where Trump's big idea, a payroll tax cut is a non-starter. So why didn't he meet with uh, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi? Trump and Nancy Pelosi aren't exactly on speaking terms, Politico reports. So he's deputized Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin to handle talks with the speaker. Senate Republicans are also leery of a payroll tax cut, especially as Trump gave the impression he wants the taxes used to fund Social Security and Medicare slashed to zero permanently. The uh, Washington Post reports Pelosi's caucus is already putting together its own bill funding paid sick leave for workers and lunches for students whose schools are closed during the outbreak. Mnuchin is going to have to is going to have a uh, ball control for the administration. And I expect that will speak for us as well. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said after meeting with Trump, uh, we're hoping that he and the speaker can pull this together. It doesn't even sound like they're speaking the same language at this point. No, because Trump is sitting there talking about like an economic stimulus package and slashing payroll taxes and defunding Social Security and Medicare. Like who fucking whose response to a fucking pandemic is like, we've got to cut funding to Medicare quick stat. Yeah. Um, This motherfucker is trying to save the economy. He's not even trying to address the fucking virus. This president is a fucking joke. He's always been a joke, but at times like this, it just highlights what a fucking joke he is. I mean, <laughs> this is the first time he's actually had to deal with a fucking like domestic disaster. You know what I mean? Like he didn't get a 9-11. He didn't get a Katrina. So this is this is him in that circumstance. And uh, so far, not so great. Uh, doesn't seem like he's handling it that well. I would actually say that at this point, Bush's handling of Katrina was better than this because at least Bush had like some uh, semblance of a fucking response 
to what happened in Katrina, even if it was bad. You know what? Trump doesn't right? seem to be responding at all. He's he's responding to, uh, oh no, the economy's bad. The Dow is going down. Quiet. The cases are heading down to zero, TJ. Down to zero, huh? Down to zero. Just like Captain Planet, we're going to take pollution down to zero. We're going to take the coronavirus down to zero, TJ. Captain Planet, huh? Yeah. I got Captain Planet on the case. Don't even worry about it. Coronavirus, then of the past. I mean, there's going to, uh, when this gets to a certain point, there's going to have to be a massive new government program that just is kind of born and a bunch of money just appears. Yeah, it's going to have to be a, a complete, like, sweeping national health crisis response here. And the fact that it sounds like at least half of our government isn't even thinking on those terms yet is it's unconscionable, dude. I think how they can bail out a bunch there's of There's just no money. excuse. There's literally no excuse for it. I mean, he just doesn't. It seems like his top priority right now is getting, not just his. Yeah. And half it, our fucking government's priorities. The prior, are his their priorities. priority is get the Dow back up. Get the Dow back up. We got to make sure that fucking Wall Street is OK. That's their fucking priority. How is that your fucking priority in the midst of a pandemic? You stupid fuck. Uh, they just show their real hand. That's all that. That's all they're about. Uh, so E3, which, uh, you know, big event. I mean, a big electronics event right there. Yeah. I mean, I've heard I remember E3 used, it used to be gamers were, oh, it's E3. It's E3. Now it seems like the last few E3s gamers well, have been like, fuck E3. That plays a role in this, too. E3 has started to be like when it first came out, it was kind of like a like a big expo for all the cool new tech and shit right and now it's just a big advertisement it's just advertising booths and that's all it is it's right just, it's like come here and watch a fucking three day long commercial yeah so and so people that go to it have been hating it for uh, several years now so. right so it's kind of law it's kind of uh, diminished and tarnished its own reputation but still a big event and apparently it's been outright uh, canceled now E3 organizers on Wednesday uh, announced on Wednesday that the gaming event has officially been canceled following increased and overwhelming concerns about the COVID-19 virus. We felt this was the best way to proceed during such an unprecedented global situation. The organizer uh, wrote an email. The original post is below. Um, so, but yeah, it's basically canceled. We don't need to fucking read their post, but it's fucking canceled. <clears throat> You're planning on going to E3. Forget about it. See, I was going to go to E3, too. I was I had to my tickets and everything. I was going to go to E3. No, you yeah. weren't. I was. I was, Paul. I was going to go to E3. All right. Yeah, tell you what, TJ. Show me your tickets. Well, I burned them now. Oh, you burned them? After out of, I found out, out, after I heard this announcement, I was just like, ah, I got mad and I burned my well, tickets. What about your confirmation email for buying your tickets? I deleted it. Oh, you deleted I, was, it. I was just so disgusted with the entire yeah, process. But what about your credit card uh, statements? Oh, I bought it with cash. No, oh, you bought it with cash online? Yeah, yeah I bought it with How? cash. Uh, well, I I, uh, I actually contacted the company directly and uh, scheduled, mailed them. Oh, scheduled mailed a them. payment to mail them through uh, certified mail. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, certified mail. So you have a letter to them. Uh, you know, I did, but I burned my receipt. Oh, uh, what's certified to so the post office should have a copy. Oh, well, yeah, you got to go with the post office. Although I think I called them and told them to destroy that copy. Oh, you as well. did. Oh, of course. So. How convenient. Um, Ireland cancels St. Patrick's Day festivities over coronavirus concerns. Wow, it sounds like I can you imagine Trump canceling a rally over this shit? See, that's the funny thing about this It's like we live. We're not only fucked because everybody's fucked. We're fucked because we live in a place where our public officials don't take this fucking seriously. Fucking Ireland canceled St. <laughs> Patty's Day. Let that sink in. <laughs> Let that sink in for a second. And Trump has said he's not going to stop his rallies. What an idiot. So. <laughs> I mean, no, I, 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 it's, it's you've you've said it all. Maybe Ireland just, cancels St. Patrick's Day festivities. Ireland, but yet Trump, who said the cases are going to go down to zero, he was contradicting. When he was when, was contradicting the advice. When there was when there was fifteen cases. When there was fifteen fucking cases, Trump said they're going down. Now we're nine hundred fifty. I think I think um, under most models, this thing doubles every 10 days. So, you know, 
one thousand, two thousand. Oh, now we have four thousand. Then we have eight thousand. Oh, then we have a hundred thousand. I mean, it's it, it's taken it, it it's doubled in more than, in less than well, ten that, days. Show that map. You're it looking was, at it was five. I mean, yeah, it was five hundred uh, cases just like a day or two ago. Well, and to be honest with you, it's just that the testing now. I mean, more and more testing. I mean, like, look, there's way more cases than this. I mean, you're naive if you go, oh, I mean, these are going to make quote unquote confirmed cases. I mean, yeah. This I is mean, what, the, this the, is what we. This is the cases that we. We know started of. this week Monday. Louisiana had zero confirmed cases. Yeah, we have now six. We have, now we have six. We have six now. California's got a hundred plus. Washington has two hundred plus. New York has two hundred plus. I mean, of course, we got two big old bubbles of this on both ends of the country. And of course, population centers are going to be hit worse. I mean, of course, obviously. yeah. Looks like the country's got chicken pox. Well, look, Mississippi doing just fine, boy. Mississippi <laughs> ain't got even one damn case. I boy. know where I'm going, boy. Mississippi, right across the border. That's where it's safe. Yeah, there's definitely not going to be a line of crazy <laughs> rednecks with guns keeping everybody out of Mississippi if it ends up being a low fucking infection point. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> Arkansas's even got one for fuck's sake. It's just all over. I mean, like you ain't stopping it. You yeah, ain't South, stopping it. South, North and South Dakota have. I mean, well, it's South in Dakota fucking Hawaii case. even for fuck's sake. Alaska. Alaska's Alaska's doing all right. Uh, Alaska's doing fine. North to Alaska. How, how is? Uh, I think Canada's got a bunch of cases too. I have no idea. I mean, it, I mean, the worst country so far: Italy and China. Oh yeah, well, China's where it started. Yeah, Italy, well, of course. It, I don't know what I don't know what Italy did wrong where they got it so fucking bad, but their fucking entire country is being quarantined now. Uh, we're starting to see more and more cases. If you go to uh, the European Union, if there's a map there, I mean the Netherlands, Sweden, all these other countries, the UK, there are starting to a bunch of cases are starting to crop up there. I mean they're looking at Italy, going, "Hmm, is Italy what's next for us?" And a lot of people are saying yes. So I mean, what, what does that mean? Does that mean the European Union is going to be on, on lockdown? They're going to quarantine, like, they're going to enforce border controls, like, no one can travel through Europe. Could be. I mean, it's it's increasingly look likely. Uh, I mean, why not? Now, this country, though, we're probably not going to do shit. We're just a bunch of dumbasses. We'll just keep driving around. President <laughs> Trump said it's going to be okay. President said we fired. <laughs> Let's go up to the Trump rally. Yeah, good idea. Go to the Trump rally. <laughs> Yeah, other countries like... We like to shake each other's hands and rub our faces, don't we, folks? We ain't no liberal sissies. And Trump's a hypochondriac. I, I figured that one out. He's a fucking hypochondriac, yet he wants to have these massive campaign rallies with almost certainly people who car are carriers or actually infected with the coronavirus are going to show up. Everyone go to the Trump rally I mean, I mean, and cough. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, you know what? Maybe it's thinning the fucking herd. There you go. Go to the Trump rally. Get the get, get <laughs> it's the herd thin. Oh, that time. was another thing the vape shop guys were talking about. Oh yeah, that it was an Illuminati conspiracy, like a global conspiracy to thin the herd. Oh, dude. I mean, if they if the if the Illuminati wanted to thin the herd, I think they would choose something with a higher Way mortality rate than this. I think they'd choose. They'd want something with like at least like a twenty five to fifty percent mortality rate. Dude, not, that I mean that well that could destroy the herd. Yeah. They just want to thin the herd. They just want to thin, thin it out. It. They want to skim off some of these uh, leeches on society. These old people collecting social security checks. Look, it's like, ah. like look, you're making a soup, TJ, right? What ah. comes up, what's on the top of the soup after you're cooking it? These old ass pensioners yeah. that are sucking up so many fucking tax dollars. It's just, you know what I mean? Got to, got to fucking bump them off real quiet. Like, sounds like this conversation. These guys had like nine theories about where this fucking it, come from. It was it was all over the fucking place. <laughs> Uh, just like that, the, just like the the coronavirus, it was all over the map. Uh, coronavirus funerals could be streamed online if COVID nineteen becomes pandemic. What do you mean becomes pandemic? It is a fucking. The pandemic. World Health Organization has already declared a pandemic. Which so, is, but man, I mean, look, look, everyone I knew was a fucking pandemic at that point. I knew it was a pandemic the moment it got out of China. I'm like, it's killing people in China like crazy. Let's hope they can keep it contained in China. And then when yeah. it left China, I was like, okay, it's a fucking pandemic. Well, we now. did an episode on it in January, and the number of cases in China at that point were like 10,000, 12,000. Yeah. I and mean, this, that episode wasn't a long time ago. <laughs> that was not. Yeah, it was at the end of January. January. Yeah, about, about a month ago. How many cases are there in China now? <sighs> 90,000 something? And we can look it up. I mean, it's in the tens of thousands. It might be over 100,000 now. All right. I think it has started to slow somewhat in China, though. Probably just because of all the fact. I, mean, I know the there's a website that, that like counts it all down. I mean, look at look at the level of crackdown that had to happen in 
especially certain areas of fucking China. Well, yeah, that's what I mean. Like after there's a virtual lockdown of the fucking that part of the country and just people not moving around freely. I mean, it was still spreading at all, uh, uh, you know, but I mean, I, I would say at a certain point, you know, if the incubation period of this is like 14 days, if you don't go out for 14 days, but yet again, the problem is that we don't know. All right. So here's uh, this is worldometers.info. So you can uh, 125,000 and 86 coronavirus cases, uh, about 4,500 deaths, about 67,000 recovered. So you have about half of those cases are still active about half. Uh, so you have 53,446 active cases with, uh, 47,547 in mild condition. That's about 90%. And then about 5,899, 11% in serious or critical condition. Yeah. So you I mean, that's those numbers are, you know, right? uh, and then of the closed cases of the cases that have, been closed one way or the other either they died or they recovered. Yeah, either they died or recovered or they've just been discharged and put on their own you know whatever uh 71,640 closed cases uh 67,000 of about 94 percent have recovered and been discharged about six percent have died yep and that's go. of 125 cases which we can also view by country uh china uh has had 80,000 of those cases uh, Italy, 12,000. Iran, 9,000. South Korea, 7,700. You see a lot in Spain. Pretty good number in Germany and France. U.S. is right up there. Um, a lot of these countries having pretty significant amounts of cases. Some of these countries still pretty low numbers. But all these, all these countries with low numbers, those could all skyrocket up. Because remember, it was, it was just a few weeks ago that we only had 15 cases here. It was like a week and a half ago, I two mean, the, weeks ago. The irony of, uh, I read an article about how in Libya, it's like, hey, there's no coronavirus here. Our airport doesn't even function, hardly. It's like, yeah, there you go. I guess just living <laughs> Oh, thank God for that. <laughs> thank I, God I, for our I fucking get, non-functioning airport. Yeah, our non-functioning uh, society and, and a lack of strong central government. So, yeah, this, this is just a, this is kind of a fear mongery article about, oh, you're going to, we're going to, you're going to have to live stream, stream the, the funeral, funeral or whatever. Uh, so, Howie Mandel. Um, host of uh, I guess he does America's Got Talent now. Used to be the host of uh that briefcase show. I forget what the fuck that was called. Deal or no deal. Uh, stand up comedian. Uh, it was the voice of Gizmo in uh, Gremlins and Gremlins Two. Had that cartoon Bobby's World. Yeah, back Bobby's the, World. Yeah, back in the early nineties. Good call. Um, anyway, uh, major germaphobe. Uh, he showed up <laughs> to uh America's Got Talent wearing this hazmat suit. People are kind of divided on whether or not this is a joke. Because he is well known as being like a super germaphobe. Um, so here's a person saying to say Howie Mandel is a germaphobe is the understatement of the year. He has severe OCD and has been in treatment to try to cope with it uh, so that he can live without it debilitating his day to day life. A pandemic for someone like Howie is beyond horrifying. Um, you got a kind of a bunch of other responses like that, because a lot of people are like, was this is because he's a comedian. So it's like, is this a joke? Right. Is he being serious? He's dancing there, around on Instagram in a right. hazmat suit. So, I, I don't know how serious that is. Maybe it's serious for him. I don't know. I mean, I kind of feel like maybe he's being serious, but he's kind of also trying to turn it into a joke or play it off as a joke. I mean, we know that he like even if this is not a, a genuine precaution and he's just being kind of funny with it. I mean, the fact of the matter is we know this dude is a fucking hardcore germaphobe, does not shake hands, has never shaken hands. Um. You know, he's just totally anti human contact, totally paranoid about germs. So, I mean, like it, when a pandemic like this comes ar- along, he's got to be pretty fucking Terrible. paranoid about well, it. Well, it's got to justify every fear you have in your mind when it comes to that. Like, because he's a fucking total hypochondriac in the first place. So, I mean, obviously a hypochondriac in a pandemic. But on the other hand, I mean, Scotty, you're kind of a hypochondriac. Not, I'm not to the Howie Mandel level. No. But, I mean, you kind of said that, in a way, the pandemic was kind of comforting because, like, ooh, everyone's panicking now. <laughs> I don't feel so uh, alone in this now. You know what I mean? Um, it, it is, and in in I guess in that sense. But then in another sense, you realize how, like, people are not really taking it seriously, especially, it seems, in the U.S. So it's, then it's like, well, we're just going to keep spreading it. And until we have a, a grasp on how the disease is spread, until there's more... 
and, and and that takes so much time. Like we're talking about, oh, maybe a year or two they'll have a vaccine or something. In a year or two, I'll have a better grip of what this disease is going to do and how to and how to react to it and how to actually come up with measures to counter the spread of it. But well, we currently don't have anything like that, so that's also very worrying. I would say from that perspective too, because you see it as, okay, there's this unstoppable disease that's not necessarily going to kill you, but then you're going to get it and you don't know what's going to do to you. I mean, no one has any idea. You could be a fucking carrier, which is the majority of people, or you could fucking be an intensive care, or you could be fucking dead. Because that seems to basically be the... There's basically three camps, essentially, you're going to be put in. Ah, it's no big deal. Oh, man, it's pretty bad. Or you're fucking toast. I mean, just looking at the numbers, the majority of people that get this aren't going to be killed by it. The thing that I'm most worried about is the societal breakdown. Because hoarding of toilet paper becomes hoarding of food. Hoarding of food becomes people not being able to get food. People not being able to get food. And scavenging and going out. Right. Going out, going door to door and kicking doors in and taking canned food out of places and shit. Killing people. I mean, it's not it's not a, a far logical leap. No, it's not. To see things getting to that point in certain parts of the fucking country or maybe all over the goddamn country. And that's what's going to kill people. Speaking of panic... Uh, San Gabriel Valley gun sales soar among Asian Americans who fear coronavirus related attacks. There's a little video here. I think we could just play that. Reds, many people are rushing out to buy hand sanitizer and toilet paper, but some people are actually stocking up on something very different. Local gun shops have been very busy. Yeah, gun sales have been up since the outbreak began. Kickoff Nines and Gold Comstock is live now in Arcadia with a look as to why. Nicole? Yeah, Susie and Jeff, specifically here in the San Gabriel Valley, some gun store owners are telling us that many of their Asian American customers are coming in saying they're worried that they might be blamed, bullied or targeted if we do happen to see a lot of coronavirus cases popping up locally. Gun sales are skyrocketing across the San Gabriel Valley. Recently have been very busy. David Liu says in recent weeks, 10 times more customers than usual have come through his doors at Arcadia Firearm and Safety. Don't worry, Paul. Because of the coronavirus, a lot of people start to worry. The area has a high concentration of Asian Americans. And Liu says his customers are afraid they'll be targeted because of their ethnicity if a local outbreak occurs. Especially the media is telling them some Asian are being targeted, got assaulted. I don't worry. Danny Lim suited up with gloves and a mask to come buy a new gun for his wife. Why? You know, for upcoming event. He says he wants his family to be able to defend <laughs> for themselves. Upcoming for upcoming event. Upcoming event. Financial crisis. Oh boy, <laughs> it's all going just fine. Uh, this is exactly what you want: scared people with guns that Everything, probably don't know how to use them. Everything is peach. What? Where, where, where the hell, on the where where's on the, the assumption they don't know how to use a gun, Scotty? You saying Asian can't fucking uh, there's a use bunch a of gun? there's a bunch of new gun owners. What they're saying and them, where on the planet are there more scared people with guns than here? <laughs> I don't think there's anywhere scared people with guns. Yeah, uh, so it's kind of sad that uh, that Asian people feel the need to do this, but uh, they're probably right to do it. I don't know. I mean, I mean, with there's already been a, I've already, we've already seen a few reports of, uh, of Asian people being irrationally attacked by fucking crazy psychos out there who are like, you fucking did the corona. Which, by the way, if you think someone has the coronavirus, why the fuck would you want to attack yeah, them? Why would you go away from them? I want to be in close physical contact with you and your bodily fluids. Ah! Probably just a, a mentally ill person, honestly. More than likely. Maybe. Uh, and, of course, the most important thing, though. Oh, God, no. No, not the Dow. People are just attacking the president. Today. Oh, not the Dow. This fear-mongering. I don't care how many people die, but just not. <laughs> I can't take it when I see the Dow go down like this. No! Look at these poor no! day traders. No, Dow! Did you look at these poor day traders featured in this article here? Look at this guy. So concerned. <laughs> these oh. people, let me just say this. These people are the real victims here. Yep. Wall Street. Real victims. <laughs> we got to find a way to get this back up. Please, President Trump. 
Do Let's something. Sideline all this uh, common cold, you know, bullshit. I uh, I heard a um, I was uh, I heard a story from a guy who uh, had a friend. He's like they're on opposite ends of the political spectrum. One's a Trump supporter, one's not. And uh, the guy who's not a Trump supporter is always going to his Trump supporting friend and being like, "Look what Trump did now. Are you still going to support him?" He's like, yep. "Yeah, bro, but look at your four hundred one k. How about that four hundred one k though?" And so after after all this uh, stock peril lately, you know, the other guy goes to his Trump supporting friends like, hey, how's your 401k going? And you just like blocked him. <laughs> like, fuck you. Oh, man. He had to fucking block him, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. He should have said like, ain't nothing to do with Trump. It's the coronavirus. But anyway, the Dow has dropped uh, 1,300 points. I mean, it's, it's now do- down more than 20% from its record. Intraday high last month. I mean, this is inevitably going to happen, and this is the event that's just caused this to happen. I mean, it's not surprising. I mean, stocks have been in record highs for how long? I, I, wow. And I mean, can you really even blame the stock market and, and people who are selling stocks right now? It's like people panic. Time to cash in. Like, look, it, we're looking at a major recession because of this pandemic. I mean, people are not going to go out and spending their money. I mean, Wall Street is obviously just the the bellwether of that and saying, hey, look, uh, people are going to be spending money. These businesses are going to fucking start reporting losses and profits are going to go way down. Well, on top of uh, the coronavirus. Well, not all companies. Obviously, companies like make like Lysol and shit, they're going to be doing well. Yeah, my gold stock is doing pretty good. Uh, on top of uh, the coronavirus, uh, Saudi Arabia also decided now would be a good time for a price war on oil. Good old fashioned oil war. Yeah. So it is like a perfect uh, storm of bullshit yeah, so in the oil, stock market. Oil prices have crashed. Uh, cryptocurrency, uh, there was a bloodbath there as well. I mean, all of these things, besides like with a few exceptions, like I think, I think some retail stores have done well because of the fact that people are going and buying so much shit. So How let's that look last? here. Um, yeah, Dow down uh 1500 points now nearly 1600 it's down about 6.38 percent. this is just crashing and burning you look at it over five days i mean five days ago it was at fucking nearly twenty seven thousand. now it's down 23 and less than a half so they keep going down and uh yeah the the, i mean it, it plummeted and then it rallied back a little bit the next day and the conservatives were like it's gonna be fine look it's it's rallying back and today it's just like, nope, it ain't rallying back, bitch. Dude, I always think of uh, when when this shit starts happening. I always think of that Simpsons episode where they ride the the Enron roller coaster. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're like, oh god, we're all gonna die, and then they're like, oh, we broke even. Oh no, and they fall into like a <laughs> hole in the ground. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's beautiful. The Enron roller coaster. Well, that's also why you don't put all your stock. If you own stock, you don't put it all in one company. This is the exact reason. I mean, this is the entire fucking market. I mean, the whole, yeah, the entire market's going down. But I mean, look, th- these events are going to happen. There's going to be these dips like this. I mean, it happened in 2008. I mean, 2008 was more than a dip. 2008 was the collapse. 2000, 2008 was a legitimate near collapse of the global global economic system. And this is looking like it's going to be about the same. Uh, I mean, who knows? Maybe, maybe these are numbers. Maybe, the, maybe, maybe we're past it. I don't think so. I think this is going to continue to go down, especially like we're in a global economy. This virus is just getting started in some parts of the world right now. Yeah. So this is just going to get worse. This Dow is going Dow, Dow, down. And, uh, it's going to be, it's going to be pretty ugly. Cause I mean, like we're going to tell, we're going to see not just, uh, um, I mean, it's, it's like aside from just the people contracting the virus and dying from the virus, the amount of business that it stops, the amount of fucking commerce that just just grinds to a halt, uh, the amount of social unrest that's created. I mean, it's all just going to fucking I mean, sure, it's going to be a perfect storm of bullshit. Well, what I'm saying to you is that, I mean, anyone that's going to that's I mean, unless society crumbles and civilization collapses, which I mean, then who cares about the stock market anyways? <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't I don't think we're going to quite get to crumble status with this event but what i'm saying is that these are these these events are short-term short-lived events i mean look the coronavirus might be 18 months and this that might punish the stock market for you know a year or two or however long but eventually it's going to recover is what i'm saying i mean eventually i mean in in the long term until it doesn't i I mean mean, i'm not i'm not talking about fucking eventually i'm talking about right now 
Yeah, you're talking talk about for the foreseeable fucking next few months. Yeah, but what I'm saying to you is if you look at historically, maybe even years, if you look at historically at the stock market, these events don't, if, if, you, if you're investing your money or not. Well, sure. I mean, so I'm saying to you, so what do you, I mean, what would your antidote be? Oh, panic. Oh, my God. Oh, like, it's all, I mean, panicking is not going to change anything that's happening. I'm not, I'm I don't, <laughs> I'm not panicked. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, you have more money in the stock market than I do. So if anybody should be panicking, it should be you. I'm uh, not panicking about it. Oh, you panicked, bitch. You panicking. I look at look at you sweating. You need a sweat rag. <laughs> yeah. Go, don't you get me one, bitch. <laughs> go get a sweat rag. Now, nah, won't you get me one? I'll get you a Corona rag to yeah, wipe your sweaty brow with. Yeah, you're probably in fucking infected, TJ. <laughs> Disgusting piece of shit. Uh, anyway, the, the whole thing's going to collapse and Scotty's wrong. Uh, Led Zeppelin wins major <laughs> copyright <laughs> battle. for <laughs> <steroid. Move> on <laughs> to this. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> yeah. Well, Led Zeppelin. Hey, they, they hey, won yeah. their case. Should I have not? Should I have ended with the Corona shit? I, I don't know. Starting with it. I don't know. <laughs> hey, Led Zeppelin, though. You know me and avoiding news, so I've only heard <laughs> drips and drabs of this shit. This is my first exposure to the end of the world. <laughs> uh, Led Zeppelin wins major copyright battle for Stairway to Heaven. Good. Good for them, right? I mean, hey. It's been going on for a long time. Well, what, I don't even know. Do you know the details of this case, Scotty? Because I don't know the details of this case. <sighs> to explain it, I probably would do a very poor job. All right. So let's all let me read the article here. The legendary rock band Led Zeppelin won a major copyright battle on Monday over claims that parts of their signature song Stairway to Heaven were stolen. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals upheld a jury verdict that found Stairway to Heaven did not infringe on the 1968 song Taurus by the rock band Spirit. In doing so, the court er overturned a controversial precedent the Ninth Circuit has used in copyright cases. The original lawsuit filed in 2014 claimed the guitar introduction to Stairway to Heaven, yes, the one you're singing in your head, infringed on the copyright of the instrumental of Taurus. Have you ever uh, gone and listened to this Taurus shit to see? Um I think I did. And it just, I mean, it sounded maybe a little bit similar, but I don't think I was like, this is Stairway to Heaven, but hmm. and it's been a while since I listened to it. I mean, should I play it? You think it? I mean, I played five seconds. If, if they're if they're suing Led Zeppelin over it, we, they're probably going to fucking be pretty hefty. at Yeah. Keeping control. I can probably them. at least get away with the five second rule. Yeah, I mean, that, that's what YouTube stated policy. So. So if this video gets away with it, I'm going to assume we can, too. So there's Led Zeppelin doing their Stairway to Heaven thing. <clears throat> so they're going to play the whole fucking thing? No, uh, they don't play the whole thing. They're just playing the relevant bit. All right. I mean, they got away with it. Fuck it. Hmm. It's pretty fucking close. I mean, it's close, eh, but it's it ain't the same eh, shit. No yeah. cigar. That's what I'm saying. It was like it it's was, close, but no cigar. Yeah, it was I mean, I can close, see it. I mean, like maybe they did, but eh, there's no incontrovertible. Like there's no incontrovertible evidence they did it. When, when I listened to it, it sounded similar, but I was like, I don't know if you can necessarily say this is the same, the exact same thing. Well, I'm glad we got to the bottom of that mystery. Oh, they won anyways. William Shatner gets horse semen in divorce settlement. I don't know the man. Take anything you want, honey. Just leave the horse come. <laughs> Just a lot of money. leave me with the is frothy like, horse come. Is this like val? This is like valuable horse oh, come. This is be. like it's gotta be like a fucking right. This isn't. This isn't just like he. She took my horse come collection or something. This got to like, be some like American pharaoh jizz or something. Uh, William Shatner was awarded horse breeding equipment and even horse semen in his divorce settlement with ex-wife Elizabeth Shatner. Uh, according to court filings and media reports, the actor's divorce was settled in Los Angeles Superior uh, Court Tuesday. According to court records, they separated from one another in February 2019. Um, damn, it took a year to wrap that shit up. I guess divorce is pretty complicated when you're fucking uh, rich like that. Uh, yeah. The couple, div couple divvied up their four houses. No, the cuppy, dude. The cuppy. The cuppy divvled up their four houses. Horses, sorry. According to media reports, William will get Renaissance man's uh, Medici and uh, Powder River Shirley, while Elizabeth will get Belle Revis, Revis, so photogenic and pebbles people reported. Um, but the former Star Trek actor 
who is a horse breeder, will get all horse semen as part of the settlement. Hell yeah, dude. It's not the first time Shatner has had a horse case. In, I'm sorry, a court case involving horse semen. A horse case. <laughs> a horse case involving court semen. <laughs> and one of his wives. He was sued in 2003 by ex-wife Marcy Lafferty Shatner, <laughs> who claimed William broke an agreement in their 1995 divorce settlement that allowed her one breeding privilege per calendar year with their American saddlebred stallions, the Associated Press reported. <clears throat> William Shatner gets in a lot of... Uh, Horse semen related misadventures. Yeah, this horse cum has been a problematic asset of his for uh, some divorces time. Divorces too. Might be time to unload the horse jizz. You Dude, know what I mean? William Shatner's what, like eighty five or something? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's old. I mean, like he's the, super the, fucking. The old. fact that he's getting divorced and having to go through this shit again—it's like, damn, dude. Most people would settle down at this point. I guess. Uh, oh, William Shatner. Well, he tried. He tried. It just keeps going wrong for him. He's eighty eight, by the way. Hey, they, you know what? They want his horse semen. Yeah, the allure of the horse cum just drives all his wives against him. You at just some want point, they, at first they, I mean, come. they get with him to be with William Shatner, but eventually they're corrupted by the horse semen. Yeah, then he shows them the, the horse come, and they're like, I gotta have this. I must possess Half it. of this is mine. It's all mine. But they didn't know how protected. He gave up his house for the horse come, man. He doesn't care. I gotta be honest with what you. What he's gotta do. I'd probably go the other way. Maybe I'm stupid, but I'd probably go the other I'd be like, all right, I'll take the house. You can have the fucking vials I'll, of horse jizz. I'll be honest with you. It depends on the uh, the lineage of those horses. Oh, I'm Cause, sure. Cause if, some of those, dude, some of those horses, if it's like goes back to like a triple crown winner or something, or if he's, I don't know if it, it does in this case, <laughs> but that could be worth 500000 to a million dollars. Fuck Some me. expensive jizz. So that's what I'm saying. So, I mean, it, it just really depends. I mean, maybe it's so. Damn it. So uh, I looked for trailers. There's really not many new trailers out right now. So uh, we're going to try to give Scoob another chance to sell us Fuck on the premise. Off, TJ, you piece of shit. I know you pulled this, dude. I mean, there's not much. There wasn't much to pull. So uh, Scoob, I guess. See how you feel about this, motherfucker. Scoob, do you realize where we are? I hate Shaggy's voice in this. Like, could they not find anyone that could do a proper fucking Shaggy voice? Is there no one in America? Scoop, do you know where we I've are? Heard, I've heard people do good impersonations yeah, of I've fucking heard, like, Shaggy. Yeah, I've heard, like, people just in day-to-day -day life do a better impersonation of Shaggy's voice than this voice actor they fucking picked for this. I don't know what the fuck they were thinking. Oh, look around, man. The clean, modern aesthetic, the cool blue color palette. We're in Ikea. the Falcon. Did you say Ikea? Nope. I said Falcon Fury, just like you. Uh, uh, Scooby is way... I mean, I know we've, we've said it before, but he's just way too articulate in this. Like, what is the point? Like, Scooby, I mean, he can kind of talk, but he's, like, limited yeah. to a few, Shaggy. like, very monosyllabic kind of... You know. What row? Yeah. What row, Shaggy? Do you want to discuss the metaphysical nature of reality? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what, like, what the fuck is this, dude? Yeah, like, he doesn't have that kind of vocabulary, all right? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Shaggy and Scooby were taken? Yeah. This blue light came down from the sky and beamed them up. I, I, I can't. I, I can't breathe. I'd have to assume that if they were with their friends, they wouldn't have been kidnapped. Okay, can you skip the emotional punishment? The people performing this just sound bored. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, can you skip the emotional punishment? A blue light came down from the sky and took them up. Okay, can we drop the emotional punishment angle for a second? It's because this is made for Zoomers, Paul, not boomers like you. You don't understand. Being invested in things is lame. Oh, God, I'm so apathetic. Emotional everything. investment in what's going on around you is fucking gay. Why would you need that in a movie anyways? Guy, what was Scooby and Shaggy? I don't know, but I'd like to shake the hand of whoever created this. Damn, what a piece of shit. And then, you know, throw that hand in prison for trying to kill our friends. Uh, no. You just want them dead. Hey, this mangy stray is coming with me. This is like most of the same clips from the previous trailer. They like, is this all they got? Is this what you got, movie? Because I've seen a few new clips mixed in, but this was like a lot of the shit you're showing us was already in the fucking last trailer for this movie. Oh, by the way, not not to let it fucking slide. The song that they're using as the background for this is fucking insipid. Oh, God. Yeah. 
Nie, 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 nie. It's like, uh. Hey, Paul, you need, you need to come with your, your, your uh, cover of this song. <laughs> that was just, that was it. His name's Scooby. Middle name. Doobie. Last name. Doo. I never knew anybody till I knew you. <laughs> oh, God, this is even worse. Welcome aboard. Are you? This isn't about some guy in a rubber mask. I would have gotten away with this if it weren't for you meddling. This is about one of us. <laughs> Welcome to the Falcon Fury. Uh... Hang on, hang on. Turn on the lights. Where are my balloons, Dee Dee? When I say Falcon Fury, that's supposed to cue the balloons. Oh, great. Great timing. You might want to buckle I just want to. Is there going to uh, be a funny what? joke or anything in this movie or no? No. Uh, is it even trying to be funny? Now there's some rival dog, to rival scoop. And then there's some rip off of like, what's that guy in Watchmen? Um, <laughs> Scooby Dooby Doo. Maybe this can What's even going on it. here? Jinkies. Apparently he's been stealing Netflix by using his mother's account. <gasps> that is not fair for the rest of us who have to pay for Netflix. You have to pay for Netflix? Here we Dear God. Oh, All right, well. Uh, product placement, product placement, product the placement. The coronavirus is a blessing in disguise. This is going to wipe us out. Cause this is, I mean, is this, is this, this not is proof we, that it's time? We deserve it. This is, yeah, this is, uh, this is strong evidence that... Whatever pandemic comes along is justified in its destruction of the human yeah, race. Yeah, and this dude's like the Night Owl, dude. That's what, that's what I was trying to think of from Watchmen. Like, they just basically ripped off the character design for the Falcon Fury or whatever the fuck dude, his worthless name is. Look at the fucking stupid-ass outfit Scooby-Doo is wearing back there. You see that? <laughs> oh, my God. Can you see that back there? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. If you want, you can pull over and drop us. Well, that's horrifying. Drop here. <laughs> Okay. Yep. I'm. Uh, I'll be dreaming about that tonight. <laughs> Thanks, trailer. No. Every hero should have one. I want the Rock to play me. Mm, never gonna happen. <laughs> wow. Well, at least the coronavirus will make sure that movie fails. So. Wow. There's that. Wow. 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 We, we haven't wow-zy, talked wow. enough about the upsides of the coronavirus and uh, <sighs> destroying a bunch of fucking shitty Hollywood movies. Speaking of the Rock. Ugh, no. How about another? Look, I know the first trailer for Jungle Cruise didn't impress you guys, but you know what? I'm thinking Number what two. you needed was a a strong second trailer to get your ass in that theater seat, huh? Right. Oh yeah, sure. This is gonna do it. This is gonna be the one, guys. You feeling it? I'm feeling it. So what are you doing out here? Oh, this got this got atmosphere. There is a legend in the jungles of the Amazon. Yeah, of a legend tree in the jungle. Heals yeah. all. It could change the world. But if it gets into the wrong hands, it could awaken a great evil. Yeah, getting com- snake face? Getting compelled what the fuck, now, dude? Huh? Look at snake face over here. It's like a fucking male Medusa. There is a legend of a movie so terrible it will. I believe that the legend is real. Which it's not. And I'm going to find it. Which you want. And when I do, just imagine the lives that could be saved. I've been looking for this tree longer than anybody. I've tracked the legend to every village, every island. Nothing. You're searching for something that can't be found. But you've never had the key. Let's do oh something. my god. Let's go see some elephants. There are no this elephants. This fucking here. movie again, dude. Like- How many times are they going to make this? A bunch. As there many is, times as people will continue to pay to see them. Will this be the one where they stop? No. Well, maybe. This is actually similar to the plot for Anaconda 2. Yeah, this is kind of like... <laughs> I mean, it really is. like a is. PG version of Han- Anaconda Hunt for the Blood what? Orchid. <laughs> yeah. It really is. Why, are you, why, are you, why, is uh, why is Disney ripping off Anacondas? Wasn't I, that... <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> Disney is so out of fucking ideas. The Jungle Cruise movie... Let's throw a dart at a board full of random movies to see which one we're going to rip off. All right. Oh, Na- we're going to do that name one. Name of a Disney ride with no no real backstory made into a movie. Uh, uh, oh, Jungle Cruise. Dude, Jungle Cruise barely works as a ride. Yeah. Like, it's fun, but not yeah. two and a half hours fun, you know? 
five, ten minutes worth of fun, maybe. But what if you put the rock in it, though? It doesn't matter. What if you got the rock, though? He looks absurd in this, by the way. It's it's like they, they just threw him in some kind of period costume, and he just looks like a big wrestler dude in a weird 20s outfit. There's no way a dude that shredded would be out in the Amazon r- on a tugboat. You know what I mean? Lady, everybody likes elephants. He looks absurd in this. No, no he doesn't. Everything How can you, you say see that, Paul? Wants to kill you and can. Careful. Make it smell fear. Oh, I am not afraid. Well, you shouldn't be because you're clearly reacting to a green screen. Nobody's Careful. afraid. I am not afraid of this obvious CGI cat. Well, no shit. Neither are we. Yeah, <laughs> no you, one is. You're not afraid of that tennis ball? Good job. How can you say he looks ridiculous? Look at him. <laughs> Look at him. He looks fucking ridiculous in this. <laughs> Hi, is that a neighbor? milkman hat they put him in? He looks like he walked right out of the time period, Paul. He looks like he looks like a milkman. Looks like he just fucking smoked a fatty. <laughs> He's like, whoa, yeah, you want to go on this cruise? Milkman's, milkmen smoke fatties, Scotty. Oh my god. Who brings a submarine to the Amazon? Fire! Who who brought you to the Amazon? I'm an evil British asshole. Hey, look, that's like the same. That's like the same as the fucking uh, place where they had the showdown in the fucking end of Anaconda 1. I know, dude. It looks almost identical. (laughs) This is just a low key sequel to Anaconda. You know, that's the thing about the uh, the Jungle Cruise ride, too. A real high-octane kind of thrill ride, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, when I think Jungle Cruise ride, I think nonstop action of adventure. All, of all the rides at Disney World, that's the one I fear to go on, dude. Yeah, it's kind of even scary to go on. My, the scariest part is when, so the, intense. when the tour guide is like, Oh, look out on the right there, folks. You got some hippos on the water. And then, like, the little hippo comes out and squirts water at the boat. Man. I've never been so fucking exhilarated on a ride before. <laughs> Me neither. Good night. Oh, I got you. Um, I'm really confused. I'm mean, now getting like Pirates of the Caribbean territory. Well, I mean, they've been Davy Jones. They've been like trying. To, they've been trying to rip off that vibe for this entire trailer. I mean, they got all the same fucking elements and shit. It's like they're trying to make it up. They're trying to make a Pirates of the Caribbean movie without actually making a Pirates of the Caribbean <laughs> with no pirates and yeah. not in the Caribbean. Yeah. Yeah. But trying to ape a lot of the other stuff that dun, made those movies dun, successful. Dun, dun, dun. Forgetting that only the first one was even any good. <laughs> Frank, get it. Hold on. Come on. I got it. Frank. I don't got it. No, 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 no. no. Oh, just, say, just leave me alone. That was a disaster. It didn't go the way I planned. <laughs> that's that's what you're gonna say after the box office uh, for this movie yeah. comes out too. Maybe not because America is pretty stupid. <laughs> well, what do you guys think of that? Huh? Looks like uh, yeah. looks like dog shit. Looks like Drek. What? Uh, even more insipid and by the numbers than I even imagined. Uh, brain say dead. What? Uninspired, oh. I might say. Oh, oh it's man. been a real D, Phoned 3D in. though. Oh, man. Over CGI'd and over green screened to the point of absurdity. Uh, I don't know. Got so, a lot to say about this one. Anyway, that uh, concludes probably the uh, the uh, uh, public section of the show. Get out of here, plebs. Uh, uh, so the, the plebs, the they got to go. Skedaddle. Get the fuck lost. There's the door. The remainder of the show is only for patrons. So get the fuck out of here. Uh, there's a couple of plebs lingering. Look get at out of here. Get Let him shoe you. Shoe plab shoe. Deep bad fight. Deep bad fight. Deep bad fight. Deep bad fight.